am here with local lad Dungod, John Partridge, who is a singer, actor, dancer, presenter, TV judge, model, model, all round jazz man superstar. <laughs> and um, obviously, many people know you for your role in EastEnders Brilliant. and winning Celebrity MasterChef. Get it? Yeah. So I was expecting some <laughs> sausage rolls. Yeah, and fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The is around the corner. <laughs> but um, obviously, you also took the musical theatre world by storm, starting at just age sixteen in Cats. Mm -hmm. um, gone on to do cabaret, at, which I saw you in, and the chorus line, which I saw. Are you in? Wow. Um, and you loads. must be broke. I am. I'm not going I'm stupid. But now you are touring the UK with Everybody's Talking About Jamie. It's coming right here to the Lowry this September. Book your tickets. 7th of September. There we go. Thank you. Um, so, Everybody's Talking About Jamie. Now, loads of people obviously know what it's all about, mm -hmm. but not everybody knows its origins and how it came about. Mm -hmm. So, can you kind of tell us about? Jamie Campbell and the real story and where it's all come from. Well, obviously, it is, it does, it is a true story. Uh, and I believe that the director saw a documentary, there was a documentary that was before the musical about Jamie and his life. Um, and that was how the musical was born. That's what gave birth to the musical. The musical tells the story of a young person who is on a journey of self discovery. But whilst this is a story about Jamie and Jamie's journey, Jamie wants to become a drag queen. He also wants to go to his prom in a dress. But it's also a story about a mother. Mm -hmm. It's also a story about father. Yeah. It's also a story about friends and classmates and teachers and how they all react to Jamie and to Jamie's story. And I think that is what makes this musical and this story resonate with so many people. Because as queer people, sometimes if you're really, really lucky, you are able to bring your family and your friends with you on that story. Not everybody is as lucky as that. And what this story does is shows people away. It shows people how to love that young person who is experiencing that and that is incredibly important. People say, you know, what do you want people to feel when they leave the show? You know, and I just want people to feel seen and to feel heard and to know that it's not just them, their son, their daughter their family, you know, there are a lot of us out there and it is possible to move forward through your child's queer identity as a family. Yeah, absolutely. And it's that brilliant reference point as well, isn't it? Like you say, that people have got something, if they don't know where to start with it or if, if parents or anyone are struggling, yeah. it's a reference you know, point. And this isn't a fairy tale. No. no, it's not a fairy story. It's not make-believe. This is based on fact, on real life. It is true. It is real. Uh, and I think that is also important because, you know, there is a, a happy-ish ending. It's probably bittersweet. Not everything is resolved. Not everything is worked out because life isn't like that. You know, parts of it will be good and parts of it won't. And that, that, that's why it's really important to show, to still keep that conversation going. Listen, the most political thing you can do is to be your true authentic self. You know, yes, this is a grade A award winning <laughs> musical with all the accolade that goes with that. It's got incredible costumes, it's got incredible choreography, it's got brilliant performances, it's got music that's going to make you dance out, out of the aisles and into the street. <laughs> But it also is a, it also has a message of social justice. Absolutely. And that's what is also really important. It feels like to take this musical around the country, there's a level of sort of activism in it. And for somebody like me, as a 52-year-old gay man that sort of has been through Jamie's sort of story in the 80s, through Section 28, through the sort of birth of being able to have a civil partnership, then being able to get married, by having these hard-won freedoms, 
one, yet now we feel a little bit of a pushback against that. And there is a little bit yeah. of a pushback against that. You know, and, and I feel that on just on the periphery of my sort of spidey sense. <laughs> and, and that's why it is really, really important to take this, to take this joyous, beautiful, inclusive story around the country and to show people um, to show people that there is a way and I'm very very excited by that I'm really quite proud of it you know this is my hometown I get to open this show on my home turf yes. and then I get to take it around the country and then I get to bring it back to my second home in, in London and you know for me there's something really really beautiful and full circle moment for that and I'm grateful Honestly, your passion is just like oh, it's coming through so much, and I mean it. I know, I know. You know I'm not just here spouting not out some all. like PR notes from a from a you know. Yeah. You, there's a PR person just stood right here. But it's like <laughs> I, you know, I'm not here doing that. No, you know, no. I wish you, it, just not me. You know, no. this this is my lived experience. Yeah. I know what it's like to be a 16 year old. You know, I, I started. I went into cats at 16. I was not a fully formed person, you know, in a very fully formed adult world. I know what it's like to be that young queer person that's trying to work out what it means, what it is. So I get to see myself in that character, yet I also get to play in this musical a definitely a, a gay man in his mid life who's also trying to work out what my place is in, what my queer identity is as an older gay person. So for me, I really get to cover all of those bases, you yeah. know, and that's why I feel, that's why it's important for yeah. me, you yeah. know, you know, that's why it's important for me. And we are, of course, talking about Hugo, aka yeah. Loco Chanel, um, who is kind of a mentor to Jamie. There's a um, lot of things. A lot, yeah, a lot of things. Um, that's kind of how he starts out. Absolute gorgeous heart who just wants to show the world what love, how simple, why shouldn't love just be simple? Um, and I've seen this a couple of times before with different, so I've seen Shane Richie, I've seen Cathy right. Del Rio. Yeah. Um, and I think it's fair to say that they kind of bring a little piece of their heart to the show. Mm -hmm. I already know you're going to from the city <laughs> yeah, yeah. so what can we expect from your kind of, your version of this part? I think for me, it's going to be quite an honest performance. I, I mean, the nature of musicals and drag are, there is an arch element to that. There is a, you know, something that's not necessarily real. But I think for me, that's not how I'm going to, I don't think that's how I can be. I think I have to be as truthful and as authentic not just to the story, but to myself. Hugo is a character that really has sort of said goodbye to a huge portion of his life. Be that the drag side of his life, but also I think as a gay man, I think he's kind of closed the door on all of that. And Jamie walking into his store rekindles everything about himself. It rekindles his idea of who he was. It rekindles his love of drag. I think it also rekindles the love of himself. I think he finally steps back into the person that he was. And I think a lot of people in their 50s uh, because I am in my 50s. I think you need to keep saying that because nobody's going to believe you. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I think a lot of people feel like that. Yeah. You know, I always used to think it was funny when people used to say, when I used to watch older actors and when people sort of talk about an invisibility you get when you get over a certain age where people s suddenly stop mm -hmm. seeing you. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that people have stopped seeing me because I make sure they can see that. You know I mean? I'm like, hang on. But I understand. I, I understand now more than I did before. You know, I am well aware of what's behind me as opposed to what's in front of me. You know, I am well aware of that. Uh, and that's what I feel about this character. That's my affinity with that character. And, you know, just like Chico in the piece, you know, this 
musical in a way. I've not done a musical since 2019. You know, I had some vocal surgeries, uh, I had some trepidation about doing stage shows again, you know, and I haven't done it. This is the first time I've done a, a stage show in a long time. And for me, there's also that parallel. This show is also allowing me to step back into my own life, my own musical life. Uh, and so there is that parallel. So I feel, um, you know, on one hand, I'm also I'm really, really excited about it. On the other hand, I do have some trepidation about it. Uh, and, and so once again, you know, there is a similarity in, in, in where I am in my own private life and, and the character. And, you know, I'm still trying to work out whether that's a good thing or a bad thing yet. But <laughs> I tend to live everything that I do. Yes. I tend to, that's how I am. I'm kind of quite method like that. So I, I'm looking, I'm also looking forward, you know, to slipping the heels back on and, uh, you know, slapping the lash on and, and a wig and, uh, and saying hello to myself again. Yes. Well, I was going to ask, because during the show, you kind of, I'm guessing you don't get a chance to get into full on sort of padding, tucking, like there full is pad track. I've got, I've, got a, I've got a costume fitting on Monday and it is padding. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's all of that. I think that's someone have to tuck because you don't see it. No. Yeah. yeah, but I did tuck for La Cage Fall, which I also did here yes. at, at the Lowry, but no, I'm not going to have to tuck. Because <laughs> it's horrible, it's literally horrible, um, but I am, but all the other stuff, yeah. So I'm really looking for, yeah, I had a little from my lovely Lydia McDonald, who's the, the costume supervisor, she was like, I just need you to come in and to talk about your padding, I was like, <laughs> But I'm looking forward to that bit, that's the fun yeah. bit. You know, a bit different to cabaret. Yeah, a bit different to cabaret. No close at all to cabaret. But I'm looking forward to, um, that's the bit I'm sort of looking forward yeah. to. I'm not looking forward to getting ready in 20 minutes. Because <laughs> uh, normally it takes me a lot of like that. But I, I am looking forward to, the thing that's great about this part is, you know, I get to, you know, Drag is caricature, isn't it? It's larger than life and it's, it, it, you know, I, I, I have been known for chilling the scenery now and again. <laughs> Uh, uh, listen, I'm going to say it first. Um, but what I get to do in this character is I get to be two very, very different people. Yeah. And, and this is the thing about drag. This is what drag allows you to do. Drag allows you to express yourself in the way that you couldn't. Mm -hmm. A little bit like a musical, like when you run out of words, you burst into song. <laughs> and and that's, that, that's what drag is, is about. It's about, it's really, it's about community and it's about a lot of dressing up to feel safe. So I am also looking forward to being able to do that, you know, in front of an audience as, as well. It's, it's a very much life imitates art, art imitates life. Yeah, and I think that's a brilliant kind of, like with Hugo and Loco and, and drag in general, it's like, it is this kind of armor that you can kind of put on behind the mask and the wig and, and all of this to kind of face the world and go, well, actually, this is who I am. But because I'm like this, you can't touch me. Yeah. It's kind of that. And whilst obviously I've not got that experience, I do have other experiences that where I do that in my own way. And so I think it's such a relatable character is what I'm trying to say in a really long The thing is, it's about community, isn't it? Like, you know, and you can do that for many, in many other ways. If you look at like mods, rockers, mm -hmm. punk, this is drag. Mm. And there are other ways that people, because drag, that's what I'm saying, drag is about community. And there are loads of other ways that we do that. Say, I don't know, say you're part of a sports club. It's, a, it's about community. Say you're part, yeah. you know, say you're like muscle men. You go to the gym, you're all, you're yeah. all looking the same, doing the same things. And it's the same thing. You know, it's just, that, that's why I really feel that drag is, everywhere in, in just other forms and other guises. You know, it's just about community and about belonging. Mm -hmm. And you can find that in lots of different areas, lots of different walks of life. So, you know, and that's what the show's about. Yeah, it's, 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 it's giving you a place to belong. Yeah. It's allowing you to come here and feel like it's okay, like you're with like-minded people yeah. and you haven't got to worry. That's all, that's all it is. Yeah, as the song says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met any of the real life Jamie people? 
No, I mean I've not. I'm a I'm a newbie. Mm. I know on this tour there are lots of people that have done it before. So um, I haven't met uh, the real life Jamie. I've been at events uh, where they've been there, but I haven't actually met them in person. I met Dan. Dan. I did a show in uh, in Edinburgh. I took my one man show to Strip. My husband did hairspray with Leighton. Um, so I knew Leighton through my husband John, and when I was doing my show in Edinburgh, uh, Leighton brought Dan to see my one-man oh. show. So I've met them. I've met Dan once, and uh, but other than that, no, I'm a, I'm a newbie. It's nice to be a newbie at something at 52. Right, there um, you go. Yeah. So, but I'm very much looking forward to um, to to being part of the JB family yeah. because that's what pe that's whenever somebody talks about it. Haley, obviously, I know very well. Um, People always do describe it um, uh, as a family, so I'm uh, I'm uh, looking forward to uh, hopefully being welcomed into the fall. I think you already have been. <laughs> I think you already have been, and you're so so passionate. Honestly, I was excited anyway, but now I'm just like, come on! Yes. So thank you so so much, John. Pleasure, it's been blessings. an absolute dream chatting with you. Thanks so um, much. Come to the Lyra in September and watch Jamie. Everybody's talking about Jamie. You will not be disappointed, and you will find where you belong. Peace out. There's a clock on the wall, it's moving too slow. It's got hours to kill and a lifetime to go. And I'm holding my breath till I hear the last bell. Then I'm coming out hard and I'm giving him hell. I got the dreams, I got the star, I got the moves to make you smile. To kiss my ass goodbye, cause I'm gonna be the one.